Coming up, we'll be on location at Optimum Health for Life, discussing women and heart health, focusing on the powerful book, The Pause, that has helped so many women improve their heart health, mental health, and their overall wellness with one of this area's top health and wellness experts, Linda Pankala. Welcome back, Linda. It's wonderful having you on again with us. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. We've got so much more to talk about today, and we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail about your book, The Pause, which is helping so many folks throughout the region and beyond and uh, in so many ways. And, you know, you really, it, it's literally a guidebook, what you've written, right. as far right. as for smart heart choices for life. And right. I wanted to begin, if you can please tell us a little bit about your background and your life as a jockey or a horse jockey, which I was shocked to learn prior to today's interview filming, even though you have over 30 years as a top massage therapist and integrative uh, healing uh, expert in the region, but you were a horse jockey at one time, so you have a lot of experience and knowing the importance of utilizing your hands, whether it was to help horses in the past or it's to help people for all these many years. And I wanted to ask you if you can please tell us how these experiences of yours as a jockey with horses in the past and as a massage therapist now inspired you to write this book, The Pause. That's a great question. It, the metaphor of racing and the racetrack and being with horses allows you a really big moment to put it all together in terms of pace and how you can just control a racehorse when you are riding a racehorse and really being aware of your pace and being aware of how fast you're going and also making that transition into just trying to win a race knowing how fast you're going and so when I got to this junction thinking about writing a book on heart health, I wanted to bring in my other career, that of being a jockey, and to show some metaphors and some analogies of how I could take my racetrack years with a racehorse and going really fast at 40 miles an hour to slowing my massage therapy client down on the massage table. Yes. That phrase you mentioned a few moments ago, the pace of the race, not only describes a horse race, but as you said, it really correlates uh, to the race of our daily lives that we're right. all in as we go through life, right? right. And we're juggling so many roles, uh, being a great parent, we're striving for success professionally in our careers, we're, we're striving uh, to excel in our social lives in many cases as well. But this can be so overwhelming, Linda, to so many people and cause tremendous increases in our levels of stress and anxiety, uh, which can result in heart disease and other health-related issues. And so many women, in particular, are dealing with these types of stress in their lives, uh, with all the hats they're wearing and all exactly. that they're juggling, right, exactly. uh, in their lives that unfortunately can end up resulting in heart disease and worse, heart attacks that would, could follow. And it's in fact, heart disease has become the leading cause of death here in America. So your book, The Pause, provides tremendous insight into how and why this is beginning to happen to so many women. And you're really, it's a guidebook as we said a few moments ago. Right. So I wanted to ask you if you could please share what some of these most common causes are that you have been seeing and, and noticing that you also outlined in your book? Well, a lot of it's that, that pace, the speed that we live our lives. And when I wrote this book, it took years to write it and it was published a year ago, Rocco. But our pace was fast and women weren't slowing down and taking care of themselves very much. And we were wearing lots of hats, just like you said. But what is playing out now is we're wearing even more hats and we're trying to help kids navigate, you know, virtual learning. That's right. And the emotional component of what we're all going through plays into heart health. And a high degree of emotional health plays into a high degree of cardiovascular illness in that every 38 seconds, someone dies of heart disease in this country. And every 100 seconds, 
a woman has a heart attack. But when I heard and saw the statistic that we surpassed men in 1983 of dying of heart disease more than you guys, I said to myself, wow, I wonder if other women know this. And so it really got me on this track and through divine intervention, really allowed me to see why I need to write this book is because a lot of women, when I started my Wise Heart Health for Life program, a lot of women in a room, I'd say, how many people know that heart disease is our number one killer? Half the room did not know that. You see that? They didn't know that. Yes, indeed. So you're really educating women. Right. You're right. letting them know, hey, listen, this is where women uh, rank when it comes to the leading cause of death, right? Which is heart Absolutely. disease. They're actually ahead of men that a lot of women it did not so know. It is so sad and a lot of us want to believe that it's you guys that are, yes. you know, dying more, but no, it's us. And so, but here's the deal, is that we need to take the reins of our lives into yes. our hands yes. and make good, wise, heart health choices. And wise is all about having wisdom and knowing really what, so what do we have to do? That's How right. do we do that? That's right. Now, I wanted to follow up uh, with that, Linda, and ask you, what are some of the key symptoms that women should watch for in particular when they feel they are headed down this path with all the hats they're wearing and all that they're juggling? Right, right. Well, they probably don't feel a lot of joy in their heart for doing what they used to like doing, like coming around the table, having a meal with family or going out with friends or whatever. They just don't have any oomph or any excitement about doing that. And also, um, you know, people might drink too much or eat too much or really turn to really toxic behaviors and substances to really help quell that incredible stress instead of natural things, you know, like going outside, going for a walk or, you know, just doing other things that are more healthy. Yes, that are more healthy for us. Exactly. And that's just uh, the problem there is that we're, that so many women and people in general, women and women for that matter, we get so caught up into the daily grind of our lives with right. all the things we're doing, particularly women, obviously, who wear even more hats than us guys in many cases, that we don't even realize we're on that path uh, right. to, to really end up, that ends up being harmful to us. Right, and, we, and that's what I talk about is paying attention. And so throughout the entire book, I talk about how women need to pay attention to their day-to-day -day signs and also to focus on self-care. Yeah. And we have to be told that because it's not an innate thing. And when I talk in my book about what animals do when they're stressed out, when an animal is being chased by a predator, guess what they do? They end up running to a den and sitting there and resting and recovering and resetting because they know innately to do that. Yeah. But here in our humanness, we don't know that. We, it's not normal and it's not innately in us, in our DNA. So we have to intentionally choose to reset and to do something to quiet down that sympathetic nervous system. We have to find our den, right? Oh, yes, so absolutely. to speak. We do. Yes. Exactly. To kind of calm down, to yes. find that space and place within us, to recalibrate ourselves and then ready to take life back on right again. and this is how i explain that with the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous okay. system so if you were a car if stress were a car and you're driving it the engine would be your heart and you're in control with the steering wheel the accelerator is the sympathetic nervous system the go 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 moving forward yeah. and the brake is the pumper where you're going to slow down a little bit the parasympathetic nervous system so if you're going 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 so much and your sympathetic nervous system is in fight flight or freeze we need to slow that down yes and we need to get the cortisol levels to come down and the break would be meditation mindfulness massage exercise chiropractic shiatsu reflexology things that are going to quiet down and reset your parasympathetic nervous system. Yes, indeed. Uh, some great examples there that you just gave us. Now, as far as women being the larger percentage of the population that unfortunately uh, is at a higher risk for heart disease, is that women 
of all races, all ge- all you know levels of diversity, or are there higher percentages within women based on certain ethnic backgrounds or race? Absolutely, and that was what was startling to me when I did some of my research, and I found that in the Hispanic community, one out of three Hispanic women don't know that heart disease is a great risk factor in their lives, mm-hmm. and then for the African American community of women, three out of five don't know that cardiovascular illness is their number one killer. Mm. So it really is imperative for all of us to really help everyone across all ethnicities to really become aware that we have to really begin paying attention and make wise choices. In your book, you talk about how you created the nine pillars of heart disease prevention in women. I'd love for you to please touch on that a bit right now, if you could. Sure, sure. So years ago when I was trying to educate women about it, the goal for this was to give them a blueprint or a path to understand what you really need to do. So these are the nine pillars to prevent heart disease, is know your numbers, know your HDL, LDL, blood pressure, all that. But one of the most important ones is the C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. And another one is knowing your homocysteine levels, which is um, a marker of um, how much meat you eat. And it's about your liver and B6 and B12. So if your doctor doesn't ask for that, you should be the one to know that, well, maybe I should be sure he does that. And so the other ones are assess stress, movement as medicine, um, stop smoking. And, um, and also get outside and get heart healthy by eating and drinking heart healthy things like half your body weight in water we should be drinking every day. Dehydration plays a lot. And then the other ones are your dental health is important because a lot of dentists say that all cardiovascular illness can begin in the mouth. Yeah. And a lot of people don't go to a dentist. They don't realize. So they don't. And so you could have gum issues, gum disease, and then that plays into inflammation Yes. And it's the inflammation that plays into cardiovascular illness. That's right. And then the last one is use nature to nurture, is to go outside, be on the earth, get the, the beautiful negative ions from the beach, and also use aromatherapy and essential oils. Yes, indeed. In fact, we're going to have you back on uh, with another interview in the future discussing the benefits of aromatherapy right. for all you out there watching. All right. The one thing I did find out in my research was Dr. Paul Roche from the American Institute of Stress. He presented a really long PowerPoint titled something like this. Stress, not cholesterol, plays into and is the leading contributor to cardiovascular illness. Mm. And so how that works is stress increases the cortisol in the body, which increases the inflammation in the body. And what happens when your adrenals kick out cortisol, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, it's the norepinephrine that gets your heart rate beating faster for when you need it to do something strong. And then it's supposed to reset and go back down. But here's the problem. It doesn't. And sometimes it's the chronic stress that you have and you still have that spigot of cortisol still spewing out cortisol. So you didn't have that reset, so you have a lot of inflammation because of the excess cortisol. Very interesting. It's a different way to look at stress and to understand it, how it plays out in the body. Exactly, and that's where inflammation, as you just so rightly said a few moments ago, a lot of folks aren't aware that that ends up causing then heart-related issues and problems. Correct. So it can be very dangerous if uh, unchecked over a period of time. We're now going to hear from Christine and Carol, a couple of clients of Linda's. Welcome, Christine. It's a pleasure having you on our program today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, We always appreciate it when folks take time in their busy lives to come down and share some of their experiences with us. And on that note, I'd like to begin, if I may, Christine, by having you please tell us what you were experiencing that motivated you to read the pause. First of all, I'm a very busy woman. (laughs) I wear many, many hats as many women do. And I just took on the role of caregiver. So that being said, with the busy life that I leave, I know that 
it could cause me some issues and I need to really take time for myself uh, as much as I can. We all need some of that time, yes, right? Yes, Especially someone like yourself who's wearing so many hats in a very busy life, as you just said. Uh, yes. And so hearing about Linda's experience with AFib caused me to want to learn more about heart health in women. Oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, so then as far as the pause goes, the book, how did you hear about it? And what So the pause, I heard about it from Linda, okay. actually, and it's, um, I guess, beginning stages as she was telling us, uh, telling her clients about her AFib's uh, experience. Sure. And then she said she was going to do some more research and maybe even write a book. And so I was excited to hear that she was going to write a book. Well, that's certainly great to hear. And what would you say are some of the most impactful lessons, Christine, that you learned from the pause? While reading the pause, I learned that there are more women dying of heart disease than men, mm. which was really troubling to me. Yes, indeed. Because uh, there's so many women who don't know about heart disease. And also the fact that because we are nurturers, we love uh, caregiving for everyone else and we forget about ourselves. And so in learning that also the emotions and the stress levels are one of the two things that causes, uh, it affects our entire nervous system, as well as our every cell in our bodies. And this is, if these things are not resolved, they can lead to a heart attack. Yes, indeed. You're absolutely right. A lot of these factors, unfortunately, uh, accumulate within us, right? Yes, that we deal they with do. and they build up. And, and like you said, unfortunately, Far too often over a period of time, they do and can result in something as serious as a heart attack. Yes, yeah, so and then I also read that there's like 50,000 women who die each year of heart disease. And there's only one in five who seem to realize that heart disease is one of our biggest health challenges. And so also in reading a book, I found that uh, in the black community, there's only 52% 50, of women who know the signs and symptoms of heart attacks. Mm. And then at the same time, there's only 36% who realizes that this is a big health issue for us. I mean, we realize that there's uh, high blood pressure or high cholesterol and diabetes, but we don't know about heart disease. And it becomes important for us to learn to educate ourselves so that we can live long and prosperous lives. And that's where the pause comes in, right? The yes. book, it, it really is helping so many folks, so many women, as you just touched on, to really understand some of these very important exactly. things. Exactly, yes. Uh, it's that are very, very important. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I wanted to follow that up by asking you, Christine, how would you say the book has improved your life? Well, now, the book has improved my life by understanding because of my busy schedule. I, like I'm busy from the time my feet hit the floor to the time I go to bed at night. And I know that because I'm so busy that my lifestyle has a potential of leading to heart disease for me or a heart attack. And I don't want that to happen. Of course not. So for me, the book was very impactful in understanding that. So for what I have to do is take a pause. Take a pause for myself. Take a pause where I'm nobody, I'm not a wife, I'm not a mother, I'm not a grandmother, I'm not a caregiver, I'm not a minister, but I'm Christine. And at that point, I need to just sit back and relax. And I do that with meditation, by reading God's word and by praying. I find that having that quiet time with God helps to ground me and keep me calm and relax. Yes, indeed. And that's where, just like the title of the book says, you take a pause. I take a pause, yes. And that is so important for all of us. It is. How would you describe your overall experience with Linda and the book? I met Linda about eight years ago through a friend who recommended her as a massage therapist for me. And what really uh, interests me about Linda is that when you come as her client, she doesn't see you as a 
body on a massage table. You're a human being that's um, working your way through life. You're a human being that's going through life situations. And so her first question to you is always, what is your stress level? Now, when I first heard that, I didn't know how to answer. Like, I don't think I have any stress. <laughs> Nobody thinks they have stress. That's right. But uh, later on, you realize, oh, yeah, that there are some stressors in my life when you're dealing with so many different things going on in your life. So there are many stressors. And with Linda, she's, she's very knowledgeable about the anatomy of the body. And she knows what stressors trigger different pains and uncomfort in your body. Mm. And so she's able to plan how to best serve your body once she knows about your stressors. Yes. And so she's not just a massage therapist, she's a friend <laughs> that can help you. And so when she told me about writing The Pause, I was really intrigued with the title. The Pause, because as women, we're so busy that we need to learn how to pause, yes. pause. And so uh, all of her life experiences, I've known uh, Linda and I've known about her personal issues. Um, and so in that, knowing her personally and knowing her personal story, when you can read about it in the pause, it brings the heart disease front and center for you. Yes. It brings it front and center. And so because of that, you want people to read the pause and find out so much more about it. Well, we are literally out of time and I really appreciate you sharing all that with us, Christine. But I wanted to ask you, before I let you go, for all the folks out there watching right now, would you recommend the pause to them? I would recommend the pause uh, because it's not just another book. It's a book that you can find information, you can find out the statistics, but most of all, you can find out what to do and how to do it. It so really helps you. It helps it's a guide. You. Uh, in many ways, right? Yes, it is. And on top of all of Linda's wonderful uh, services and her customized plans for each of her clients, really getting to know you like she does with everyone yes. as a person and, and then really figures out and helps you in a, sort of like a partnership, right? Right. Through Correct. life and, right. and, and right. all areas to not only help you feel better with internal pain and issues you may be dealing with, but also as a whole person, mind, yes. body, and spirit, I would think. Yes, exactly. And that's mainly what I've got out of the book. It's not just words on a page. It's really the truth that's written in written form. Yeah. And because of that, I would suggest that every woman in anyone's life, my life included, should get the pause. Not only read it, but to adhere to every word that's in it and learn how to take a pause to relax and restore and renew your mind, body, and spirit. Yes, indeed. And on that note, I'd like to thank you, Christine, for joining us, being a guest on our program and sharing your experiences. It was a pleasure having you on with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome, Carol. It's nice having you on with us today as well. Thank you. I wanted to begin right off the bat, if I may, Carol, by having you please tell us what you were experiencing, going through, that motivated you as well to read the pause? Stress. That one word <laughs> says it all, right? Yes, lots of stress. I was selling my house and buying my retirement home, and uh, I started having uh, a lot of problems with my heart, and I was diagnosed with AFib. And I wanted to, even though I had been to the doctor and the doctor had diagnosed me, I wasn't happy with the traditional medicine answers that they were giving me. So I read the pause to see what else I could do in a natural way. Yes, so that's what brought you to it. You it read it. And what would you say are some of the most impactful 
lessons or things you learned from this book? Most important tool that I ha have used from that is her 358, uh, where you uh, inhale for three seconds and hold it for five seconds and let it out for eight. And that has taught me to relax um, and during any situation. Um, but mainly the, to pause, relax, and take it easy. Uh, not have to worry about anything. Her essential oils that she's taught me to use through the book, the Young Living Oils, have been wonderful for me. And how would you say, Carol, that the book has improved your life? Well, I think mainly it, because I now can relax. I know how to relax. I'm retired, so I should be relaxed. <laughs> and with ever since I've been retired, which is four years now, um, I haven't had but one case of AFib since then. So, Congratulations! Yeah. Yes, so happy to hear exciting. that. The doctor likes to hear that too. Yes, so. indeed. Yes. So. And how would you describe your overall experience with not only Linda but also the book? Well, um, I've, I've met Linda as a masseuse and she actually changed my life years ago with uh, massage. I had tennis elbow and she took care of that just by massage. I was going to get cortisone shots and she took care of that uh, with just massage and I now don't have tennis elbow. So that encouraged me with her helping me that way to read the book and see what she could do for me for the AFib and that worked too just through the relaxation tools and reading it was, it was a wonderful read, an easy read, it took no time at all to read it and helped me tremendously. Well, we're certainly happy to hear that. And before we let you go, Carol, to all the wonderful folks out there watching right now, uh, would you recommend the pause to them? Highly recommend it, you know, can change your life. Well, that says it all. And mm -hmm. on that note, we'd like to thank you, Carol, for joining us as well and being a guest on our program. It was a pleasure having you on with us today, young lady. Thank you. We're now back with Linda. I must say, both Christine and Carol are very happy with the results of being clients of yours, not to mention all the benefits they reap from your book, The Pause, and how it's helping them in their journeys through life. So, yeah. Great work. Thank you so much. I love my clients and they're so faithful. Now we're literally out of time, Linda, but before I let you go, uh, your book, The Pause, as we've discussed here earlier today, certainly is helping so many folks and in particular so many women uh, improve their heart health, their overall mental health and wellness and mindfulness. Uh, you really are helping folks in a holistic manner as well, mind, body, and spirit that you're helping folks with and women. I just wanted to ask you if you can please tell us what you feel really helps differentiate you and your book for that matter, apart from many of the others out there over the years. Well, I think it's my approach, my natural holistic approach of how I take in all this research and I love doing research, but I want to put a spin on it to where it's digestible and it's easy to understand. And I really help people figure it out, like connect the dots. And so that it's not an overwhelming thing, which is why I only had seven chapters in my book. And I ended up making it a little guidebook to where it's very thin. Yeah. And I didn't want to overwhelm women. And I also wanted to make it small to put in a pocketbook. Oh, I so see. So that's what makes me different is that I wanted to simplify. I didn't want to make it stressful to read my book. <laughs> and uh, Yes, absolutely. We don't need Number additional <laughs> stress, right? Women certainly don't no. need that with no. all that they're already dealing with. No, I love it. It's, it's really a guidebook. It's, uh, it's very easy to read, and yet it's, it's so educational, so informative, so helpful. Uh, it's been so successful for so many women who've already read your book and have come to you as clients as well. You're helping so many folks everywhere, Linda. And really, it was a great pleasure having you back on with us today. Thank you so much. It was great being uh, here. 